Hi everyone, okay, so Casper was released in 1995, directed by Brad Silverling and written by Sherry Stoner and Dina Oliver, and it's based on the Harvey Comics character Casper the Friendly Ghost. Okay, so yes, this movie um, is very nostalgic for me, um, it's a childhood favourite. Um, I got into it because um, I grew up loving Casper, the Casper cartoon, I remember watching it um, religiously as a kid and this is one of the first slightly more mature kid slash family films I remember loving very much after being obsessed with 2D cartoons for quite some time. Okay so I'm just going to give a brief synopsis of the film and talk about uh, my personal opinion on it. Okay so <clears throat> well the movie, um, the plot of the film is that this rich heiress, uh, Carrigan Critic Critic, uh, no, Carrigan Crittenden, sorry, played by Kathy Moriarty, has inherited has inherited this um, condemned mansion from her deceased father, and um, much to her disappointment, but it's then revealed in a secret document with the will that there is a treasure hidden in the mansion somewhere. So she travels to the mansion in the fictional town of Friendship in Maine uh, with her friend Dibs, uh, played by Eric Idle and um, they quickly discover after entering that the house is haunted where you're first introduced to Casper and uh, the CGI, I tell you, how they brought Casper to life the CGI in this movie, even today, it really holds up for me how they were able to bring this this cute looking uh, cartoon ghost to, to life and how he and the other ghosts can interact with the human characters it just looks mind-blowing um, I, I remember being a slightly bit spooked out by it when I was a kid. Um, but uh, nonetheless, it still looks fantastic. And um, after several attempts to clear the ghosts out, um, Casper basically tricks um, Carrigan into seeing this report on the news um, um, of a ghost therapist um, named Dr. Harvey, played by Bill, Bill Pullman, who um, then Carrigan decides to hire and get gets uh, him and his daughter Cat, played by Christina Ritchie, to come to the mansion and uh, basically clear out the ghosts. Um, so, um, so yeah, and that's basically what the plot is: is that uh, when they arrive, they they're quickly um, confronted by the ghosts. Casper uh, introduces himself to Cat because he instantly fell in love with her when he saw her on the TV. At first, uh, there's a, she faints, uh, whilst uh, Doctor Harvey is confronted by the ghostly trio who really wants, to, who they really want to get rid of, to get rid of the humans because they aren't used to humans in um, invading their space, and um, they refer to humans as fleshy. The ghostly trio are. Um, stretch, fat, so and stinky, and they <laughs> refer, and uh, they refer to themselves as Casper's uncles, even though I'm pretty sure they're not. They weren't his biological uncles, and given what we learn in the film, um, I don't. They're not. They're just uh, other ghosts who basically bully Casper in the house. Um, but as um, after Casper and Cat are properly introduced the next morning, their friendship starts to develop, and. Um, Whilst Dr. Harvey starts to tries to start with the process of getting the ghostly trio to cross over, but they reveal to him that they have seen his deceased wife Amelia, who, who, who um, he basically believes is a ghost and is the main reason why he um, gave up conventional psychiatry and uh, started doing um, therapy for the living impaired, is what he likes to call ghosts, because he hopes to find her because he believes that she died with unfinished business. Whilst Kat is fed up with moving around constantly and she really wants somewhere to settle, she reveals that in two years she's been to nine different schools and she just wants to stay somewhere and settle. So he makes a promise to her that if this time he doesn't find what he's looking for, <laughs> that they will stay in Maine and she will be able to settle and go to a, to a school and make proper friends. Um... And uh, also, um, it's revealed at Cat's new school that there's a Halloween dance which has been put on hold because they don't have a venue to hold the party in. But when they, when uh, the kids learn that Cat now lives at uh, Whipstaff, the mansion, um, that they want to have the Halloween party there. So, Casper, um, of course, 
um, learns that uh, when he, he learns that Kat's going to have this Halloween party, he of course wants to be her date. But she has the hots for this other kid, Rick, um, who is also who is also seeked by a girl named Amber, who immediately takes a disliking to Kat because she's the new kid, and um, she basically sets. She gets Rick to ask Cat to the dance, but it's clearly a move just to humiliate Cat by playing a cruel trick on her. But um, <clears throat> as Casper start and Cat start to get to know each other, Cat um, <clears throat> starts to ask Casper about his past life, and he reveals that he can't remember anything because um, he he believes that when a ghost dies, the reason why the ghosts forget their past life is because it doesn't matter anymore. But after discovering a hidden room in the house, which I believe looks like it could have been Casper's old bedroom or his playroom, that has him um, his old toys in, plus a clay handprint <coughs> that he made. <coughs> Sorry, I've got a bit of a cough as a kid. Um, then he starts to remember um, his past life, and this leads to him remembering how he died. And it's quite a sad story is that he remembers that he actually died from pneumonia after going out sledging, and um, he got cold, and it was really cold, and then he unfortunately developed pneumonia, and he passed away. But uh, he didn't want to leave his dad alone, who was this great inventor, so he decided to not cross over and stay with his dad. And he remembers that... Um, after his father claimed to have been haunted by his uh, dead son's ghost, that he had invented this machine that could, supposedly, <clears throat> which he believed could bring ghosts back to life. And they then Casper then remembers the hidden entrance to his father's laboratory in the house. And um, there's a really funny scene of all these gad of basically cat going down in a chair, going down this hidden passage on a sort of roller coaster like track and that goes underground into the laboratory where you have all these um um th these operated gadgets like you have it there's a comb um there's a shaver that uh, basically do there's a shower a shaver a comb and a toothbrush that all operate um as um whoever's in the chair on the way down to the laboratory is is passing through because Casper reveals as a bit of a bit of fun that his father couldn't wake up in the morning, so he invented all this uh, self-operated machinery um, to wake himself up in the morning. And coincidentally, Carrigan and Dibs are also um, find their way into the laboratory. Um, and when Casper <clears throat> um, finds the machine, the Lazarus, there's also the elixir there, which uh, basically operates the machine and enables the deceased to return to life. Um, but they steal it while Cat is in the process of of operating the machine to bring Casper back to life. Dibs is able to remove the um, formula uh, just before it's poured into the machine to bring Casper back to life. And, th and then Casper is revealed to just be like a fried egg because the elixir was removed um, before it was before um, it was uh, used on him. And uh, then Carrigan goes completely mad, believing she should kill Dibs, because then he can get behind the walls into the vault, because, yeah, Casper remembers where the vault in the laboratory is, which is also where the treasure is. Plus that he remembered his father playing pirates with him, and he repeats the exact same... Um, words that were on the document. Yeah, it says buccaneers and buried gold, whip stop up the treasure hold. And um, so Carrigan then has several at attempts at killing Dibs, and really, and, and Dibs is constantly trying to. And then Dibs has fights back by pouring um, mud, muddy water on the floor, getting her to slip. But then when she accidentally trying to run Dibs over drives off a cliff and she gets and then she opens the door and accidentally steps up steps um, off too far and she falls down but then she becomes a ghost and then um with Carrigan now as a ghost um she go she goes to the laboratory where Dibs returns with the formula um, but but then Dibs decides to betray her thinking he's had he's had enough of just being bossed around by her 
and um, but then she kicks Dibs out the window, taking the um, formula back from him, and um, he supposedly dies because she kicks him through a glass window. Uh, but then what Cat and Casper do? Um, is they trick Carrigan into saying that she has no unfinished business. And um, when this happens, she basically crosses over and goes to hell, I'd assume. Um, but then also there's the plot um, that, that, that while this was all happening, the ghostly trio now, um, friend, now being great friends with Dr. Harvey um, get this idea to... They're in a bar and they've got him really drunk and it's funny it's a very funny scene because there's actually other people in the bar and no one seems to take notice that there are these three ghosts around uh, with this incredibly drunken man and uh, they have this idea to kill him and put him out of his misery not making him having to live his miserable life and make the ghostly trio a quartet but after he um, says to them that he's no longer going to harass them to leave the house, he's not going to bother trying to get them to cross over, he then drunkenly kisses each of them, and he falls um, and he falls out of the back doors, and, uh, and he f falls down, and then he actually becomes a ghost anyway. So when um, the ghosts, when the trio reveal Cat's dad as a ghost too, Cat, there's this really emotional scene, because now Cat's all on her own with with no father, and uh, of course uh, Casper, uh, of course Doctor Harvey has is already losing his memories from his life, but when they when Cat r makes him remember that they used to bink pinky promise everything, um, then he does remember, and of course then what Casper does is he decides um, to um, rather than use the formula to for the Lazarus on himself to give it to Dr. Harvey, and uh, yeah, and the machine successfully brings him back to life. Um, and then after that, you have the Halloween party. Um, the Halloween party begins, everyone shows up, and um, Cat basically goes to dance while Casper's now left on his own, because in his hopes he hoped he would be returned to life and then he could go with Cat. And that's when, that's when this, the prank that uh, the girl Amber and the boy um, Bing, Vic um, were setting up on cat backfires because the ghostly trio appeared to them in a mirror who were jointly dressed up, who were Amber and Vic are jointly dressed up as a ghost, but uh, the, the ghostly trio appear and scare them and they basically run out of the party in a panic. And then um, Casper is back in his room with his toys where the ghost, where the actual Amelia, um, Cat's deceased mother, appeals to appears to Casper as an angel, and thanks him for sacrificing his chance to return to life and um, and uh, allowing Doctor Harvey to come back to life because he needs to be there for Cat. She needs her father, and as a gift in return, she temporarily gives him the gift of life so he can go to the party and he can dance with Cat, and that and basically. The end of the movie is Cat going to the um, um, Casper, then going down to the party. He dances with Cat, but he reveals that even though it reveals that even though he's alive, they can he can actually still fly into the air with Cat, and so they dance in the air, which is funny. And um, whilst the dance is going on, um, Amelia Amelia in her angel form appears to Doctor Harvey, and she tells him not to let finding her be his unfinished business because um, she says that uh, he and Cat loved her so so much when she was alive that she had no unfinished business that's why she's not a ghost she's an angel um, but yeah so it found it so Dr. Harvey basically finds out um, you know that yeah now they can stay they can settle so he has found what he's looking for and Cat is also now happy she'll be happy that they can settle um, in this nice place and that she can have friends and she'll be with Casper um, and then um, after that when Amelia, Le Amelia leaves also giving Dr. Harvey some parental advice to let to let Cat grow up and not be so overprotective which is a nice little touch to it I think N a nice bit of advice to leave him with um, 
as the clock as the clock strikes ten and Casper and Cat kiss, then Casper turns back to a ghost, and then he turns around and says everyone says to everyone he goes boo, and then everyone screams and and then and rushes out the building in a panic. And that, that's a really fun ending, and then you have the ghostly trio playing a punk version of Casper the Friendly Ghost to play you out, and that's the end. Okay, yes, yeah, so, I mean, that's the basic plot of the film. I actually, I say, for me, it's just so nostalgic. It's a really great movie, and the score by James Horner is just one another reason why I love the movie, the, particularly the track Casper's Lullaby, I mean, which, which plays in many of the emotional scenes, particularly the scene where Casper remembers his past life. Um... It just that brought a tear to my eye when I used to watch the film as a kid, and it's hard for me not to tear up now um, watching the scene. I so say I watched this film just a couple of days ago for this, uh, and I've decided to do this review. But um, yeah, it truly is fantastic, um, and I, I think I think that's where my that is where my um, interest and love for instrument instrumental music came from was um, partly due to the soundtrack of this film um there's okay yes so that's uh, my review hi everyone okay sorry about that that was just a few technical issues there but that's resolved now okay so i'm just going to go through the cast list so we have bill pullman as dr james harvey christina ritchie as cat kathy moriarty as carrigan crittenden eric idol as dibs and as the and as the ghostly trio, we have um, Joe Alaski as the voice of Stinky. We have Jonah Pot as the voice of as the voice of Stretch, and Brad Garrett as the voice of Fatso. Um, you have Malachi Pearson as the voice of Casper, and Devin Swa as Casper McFadden. And then and then we have a list of cameos. You have Don Novello. Don Aykroyd, Don Aykroyd, sorry, uh, Fred Rogers, Terry Murphy, Clint Eastwood, Rodney Dangerfield, Mel Gibson, John Cassier, uh, Brock, Brock Wink Winkless, Steven Spielberg in a deleted scene, and Jess Hamill. Jess Harmel. Okay, yes, so that's my review on Casper. As I say, childhood favourite. Um, and it's one I would still happily watch any time. For me, it's just nostalgic, as I'm sure it is for many 90s kids. And I think it's a Halloween favourite for some people as well. Okay, well, thanks all for watching. You're all awesome, and I'll see you soon. Bye.